Hey, friend, Chris here from WideLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Welcome to day 15 in our Newbie to Ninja series here on the channel and website. We're going to help you go from being a beginner in Logic Pro to becoming an expert, fully comfortable and capable to get right down to making amazing music in this awesome application. Over the course of this series, we've been pretty heavily focused on the audio recording aspect of Logic Pro. So today we're gonna to go through the steps of laying down a couple of simple software instrument ideas using both the musical typing that turns your Mac's keyboard into a musical performing keyboard and also using Logic Remote on an iPad, which is a completely free complimentary app that you can run on your iPhone and iPad for performing, for a control surface, live loops, and a variety of other purposes. After we've recorded these ideas, we'll then explore how to lay down subsequent takes for recording software instrument takes. All right, let's continue working with the project from yesterday's video. Let's load a brand new instrument track into this project. So far, we've been going to the plus button right above the tracks area to load this dialog. But instead, I'm gonna use a key command from now on. So I'm gonna hold option and command on my Mac's keyboard and press N to bring up the dialog. And I'm going to load a software instrument track. And under the instrument section, I'm gonna load sampler which is a multi-sample sampler. And let's click Create. Once again, the library is opened, allowing us to pick through different preset sounds for sampler. We could pick through the factory options or garage band sounds. I'm actually going to move this blue arrow that's pointing at sampler in the input section of the channel strip in the inspector. And I'm gonna go up here to setting and you can see a little triangle has popped up and I'm going to click. All right, we've now changed the focus of the library from the sampler instrument, which would show us presets specific to sampler to the more extensive patch options that we can load to this channel strip. We'll dig into the library in more depth later in the series, but for now I'm going to navigate to the keyboard category and then navigate to the simple physics piano patch. And once I click on this patch, we can see that the channel strip has been updated we still have sampler, but the preset has changed. We can open the instrument by clicking on the middle of the instrument plugin. So you can see there's quite a bit to dig through. We'll leave this alone for now, but we also have plugins. We also have some routing to a reverb if we want to use it. Let's close the library by pressing Y on our Mac's keyboard. This allows us to skip having to go to the buttons in the control bar each and every time we want to open and close the library. And from here, we just need a way to perform this instrument. So let's start with the on-screen musical typing. Once again, we could go up to window and go down to show musical typing and click. Or we could use the key command, command and K to open and close this window. As long as the musical typing is open, we can use our Mac's keyboard as a performative device. We can also click on the individual keys on the on-screen keyboard. or using the Mac keyboard. Okay, so I already know what I plan on recording to this track in my project. I just need to move the musical typing up two octaves so I can perform in the octave I plan on using. So let's press X on our Mac's keyboard to go up an octave and then a second octave. And if I press a key on my Mac's keyboard, perfect, that's exactly where I wanna be. At this point, I could just press R on my Mac's keyboard to begin recording. We'll get a one bar count in, and then I'll perform the idea that I have in mind. Here we go. And then I press spacebar to stop recording. And just like that, we used our Mac's keyboard to lay down a creative idea into our project, thanks to the on-screen musical typing. If you don't own an external controller, if you're in a pinch, this is a great way to get your ideas down. From here, let's close the musical typing using key command, command, and K. Let's return the playhead to the beginning of the project by pressing return. And let's now load another software instrument track into this project. I'm gonna hold option and command, and then press N to bring up the new tracks dialog. I'm gonna choose a software instrument. And for instrument, I'm just gonna load an empty channel strip. So now check it out. We press create. The library is opened. 
the little triangle is pointed at the setting section in the channel strip. I'm going to load a user patch that I saved called the Wide Soft Clav. And now the Vintage Clav has been loaded with a series of plugins and routing. Let's close the library again by pressing Y on our Mac's keyboard. And from here, I'm going to use Logic Remote on my iPad to perform and record using this instrument. There are several different views in Logic Remote. We could have a more standard keyboard setup with smart controls, but I'm going to use the chord strips in Logic Remote, which will allow me to play various chords in a scale with a single finger. But the scale of the chord strips are based on the key signature of your project. So let's go up to the LCD in the control bar, click on the key signature, and let's choose the key of our project, which in this case is G major. Okay, we can see that the chord strips in Logic Remote have updated to match the key signature of our project. And with the Wide Soft Clav track selected, we can see that the R on the Record Enable button is red. So although it's not completely obvious, this track is Record Enabled ready. So we can start recording with Logic Remote. Let's take a quick listen to this key. Okay, that seems kind of loud. So I'm going to go to the mixer in Logic Remote. And I'm going to reduce the volume of this track just a hair and then go back to the chord strips. Yeah, I think that'll be a lot better. All right, let's start to record. I'm gonna press R on my Mac's keyboard. Here we go. Awesome. We've now laid down a second software instrument track into our project and used two different methods to perform with each of these instruments. Let's remove Logic Remote from on screen so we can focus just on Logic Pro. Now let's hone in on how to record multiple takes or ideas to your software instrument tracks. As you saw in previous videos of this series, it's really easy to set up an audio track and just record a take after a take after a take. And if we look at our old school punk guitar track at the top, we can see based on this arrow icon in the upper left hand corner of our region, that we have a take folder and we can expand our take folder by clicking. And now we can see both take one and take two and the comping that we made between these two takes, which led us to this top level take. And of course, later in the series, we're gonna explore take folders much more in depth. But software instruments are a little different than audio tracks when you wanna record multiple takes. For example, let's try recording to this wide soft clav again. I'm gonna pick some bassier notes just so it's not too chaotic, but take a look and a listen to what happens. And check it out, we don't have a second take at all. In fact, we have a single region now with the bass notes that I performed alongside the chords of the Wide Soft Clav. And if we take a look in the piano roll, either by going up to the editor button right in the control bar, or by pressing P on your Mac's keyboard. Let's expand the view of the piano roll. And check it out, we now have the lower notes in the same region as the chords. So not a separate take at all, but instead these performances were combined into this single region. Depending on what you're trying to accomplish, this could be ideal. But if you were hoping to record take after take after take to be able to choose the best take for your project, we need to dig into the Logic Pro recording settings. What we need to do is, is go up to the record button in the control bar at the top, click and hold. This will reveal a number of different recording settings that you can optimize for your projects. We'll dig into these later in the series. Let's go down to recording settings, which you can also navigate to by going up to Logic Pro, going down to settings, and going over to recording. Now check it out. In the lower half of the recording settings, we have these different options for overlapping track recordings. And we have various options for both MIDI and audio. And you can specify different recording settings based on whether the cycle range is turned on or off. So this yellow bar right up here at the top, we can have a different recording setting set up for when that is on and when it's off. Let's take a look at the cycle off section for MIDI regions. By default, when you record MIDI regions into your projects, Logic Pro is set to merge those MIDI performances together into a single region. And that's exactly what happened right here. But there are other options beyond that. If we click, 
we could choose to create a take folder of MIDI regions. So just like with audio recordings, we can do the same thing for our software instruments. So let's give it a try right now. I'll return the playhead to the beginning of the project by pressing return. I'm gonna lay down the same exact part and I'm gonna see if I can perform it a little bit better. Here we go. Notice that we no longer merge recordings together, but instead have two separate takes for this wide soft clav. And we can choose between the two different takes by clicking on each take within the take folder. If we click on take one, or take two, The one issue when it comes to software instruments and take folders is that you can't swipe between multiple takes to select the best portions of each take. With software instruments and take folders, you can only select one take or another. Definitely not ideal, I appreciate that, but it's just the way it is at this moment. I've gone ahead and undid all of these steps so we can now focus on some of the other recording options. The next option would be merge, which we've already seen. We also have the option for overlap, so just like with the drag features right up here, we could choose to have our recordings overlap existing regions on that track lane. If we give it a try right now, I'm just gonna play some random chords so we can see and hear that this is happening. Okay, I know that sounds just abysmal, but the point is, is that we now see this region for the recording that I just laid down and our original recording. And these two regions are overlapping one another. We could move one of these regions to the empty space below to duplicate the track and channel strip. So now we have two wide soft clavs. And maybe that's an option that would be helpful to you. Next, we have the option to overlap and merge selected regions. What this means is if the region is not selected and we try recording, The regions overlap one another just as we explored. However, we get rid of this. And if we select the region, then record. The regions are merged together. So you kind of get the best of all worlds. You can choose by selecting a region if this performance you're laying down should merge with the existing region or by not selecting a region, your performance and recording should not merge with anything that already exists on that track lane. Okay, so let's undo once again. We have create track. So check this out. If I lay down an idea by hitting record, And when I stop playback, Logic creates a duplicate track with the recording that I just laid down. Let's undo. And finally, we have the option to create a track alternative. We'll explore track alternatives later in the series because they're awesome. But if you feel like testing out, check it out. And now if you look at the track header for the software instrument track, you can click on this drop down arrow to swap between your different takes. It's pretty slick. All right, tomorrow in our newbie to ninja series, let's explore some more recording options available to you in Logic Pro. Thanks so much and I'll see you for more tomorrow. Take care.